Hi everyone, and welcome to Moonstone Makes. My name is Tommy. You can find me on the internet as Dynamite Trujillo. Thank you for being here. It's a cloudy and cold Monday in May here on the Northern California coast where I'm coming to you from. If you want to find show notes, check the description box below. That is where they are. Today I'm going to be talking about everything I've made in the past month. I have been knitting. But first, let's talk about what I'm wearing. This is the Be Thankful Cardigan by Lily Kate France, and I knit this using Barocco Mochi in the Aubergine colorway with the Fantastic Halo. It's a blown yarn. It's like alpaca and wool and nylon or something like that. It's really nice. The color is a really dark purple. It's so dark, it's almost black, and I love it. And it's got neps of different colors. I love this cardigan. I did modify it and I talked about it in a previous episode, but I lengthened it. This is supposed to be a cropped cardigan and I added some extra length. It's a bottom up cardigan. I added some waist shaping to go with my length. And I don't know, I modified the ends of the sleeves a little bit too, cause I didn't like how it was written. And it's beautiful. I love it. I love this cardigan a lot. In the last episode, I was working on a pair of hand spun socks and I have finished those. And here they are. I quite love them. This is some hand spun, which is Ramboulet, Sari Silk, Mohair, and Bio Nylon. And I carded the bat myself and then spun it on my ladybug spinning wheel. And it's a two ply sport weight, kind of. I had two ounces of fiber and I split my skein in half before I started knitting these socks and did them top down. And then when I ran out for each sock, I added in this contrast yarn, which is a wool. It's 100% non-superwash wool. I don't know what this yarn is. It's been in my stash as leftovers for a really long time. I want to say it's like Bracken something. I think it's Irish maybe. I can't remember. But... Uh, yeah, so these are them. I did, I don't remember any of the details. So I did these top down. I cast on using a German twisted cast on and I did a two by two ribbing. I started with 56 stitches on a US size two needle, I think, and then decreased down a little bit here. I think I decreased like four stitches overall maybe. And I did a heel flap and gusset. And then just a regular wedge toe. And they're really nice. I really love them. I really love the color of these. Um, the way I blended this bat, I just really enjoy. I used a very dark brown undyed Rambouillet. And then the mohair that I used was like hot pink. And then the sari silk was a whole bunch of different colors, but it kind of aired on the side of like purples and stuff. And the bio nylon was different shades of pink. So it's mostly the Rambouillet, so it's mostly the dark brown, but all of that like pink and purple that's going through there are just all the other fibers. And I really, really love how these turned out. Here is the other one. They're hand spun, so they're definitely nubby and knobby and stuff. <laughs> Uneven, and they're beautiful, and I love them. And yeah, I was very happy to finish these and I've worn them a couple times and I really enjoy them. They feel very good. I love hand spun socks. They're like my favorite. So after I finished that pair of socks, I cast on my next pair of socks, which is living in my This Handmade Life patchwork bag. And I cast these on using some Moonstone Dyeworks yarn, which is my hand dyed yarn. And this is the After Dark colorway on the Yak Sock Base. This is a newer colorway. I had a trunk show at my local yarn shop last, not this past weekend, but the weekend prior to that. So I have a few brand new colorways that I created for that trunk show. And I am planning on doing a shop update for Moonstone Dye Orcs in June, which those new colorways will be a part of. And this is one of the new colorways. And I, and I really like it. <laughs> so, there it is in the cake. It's a nice, rich, dark red, and I love it. So here's my first sock so far. What is even going on here? Here she is. 
So this is uh, fingering weight yarn. So I did a top down heel flap and gusset sock, just like the last one. This is on a size US one needle. I kind of tend to play between a size zero and a size one needle for knitting fingering weight socks. For these ones, I did a one and I cast on 60 stitches. I cast on 60 stitches and I did a two by two ribbing for the cuff again. That's kind of usually what I do. And it's just stockinette and I did that same thing that I usually do. I like a really long leg and so I decrease a couple times down the leg to get the bottom of the leg more to my ankle circumference rather than like my calf circumference. So I cast on 60 and I decrease two stitches here, two stitches here or something like that. And that brought me down to 56. Then I did a heel flap and gusset and now I'm on the foot and I have like probably four or six more rows until I'm done and ready to kitchener. So there's my half toe. This is a Pendulce stitch marker by La Serena Tejera. And I'm using my Chiago Mini Twister Interchangeables, which are my favorite sock needles. I love how this yarn feels. I love it so much. This is my Yak Sock base, like I said before. It's a 70% it's a Superwash Merino, 20% Yak, 10% Nylon, and I love this base so much. Colors come out beautiful on this base because the undyed yarn is a warm gray instead of a cream. It's so beautiful. It feels wonderful. I've knit a sweater out of it before, but this is my first time knitting socks out of it, and I'm like in love. I love this base, it's my new favorite base. I like only wanna die on this base, I love it. So that's my first one, I am almost done, and then I can start on the second one. So, my next, I had to frog the toe too, so there's a lot of this action going on. Uh, yeah, I messed up on the toe, so I ripped it out last night and redid most of it. And the next and last work in progress that I have is a sweater. I did cast on a new sweater. So after I was done knitting this sweater, it was a little while before I had inspiration to cast on another one. I don't know, it just wasn't there. And then I asked in my last episode, I think, what I should knit next. And I had so many responses saying to knit the Felix pullover. And this isn't the first time that people have recommended that sweater to me. In like any video where I have comments of people recommending to me either a sweater or something to get you out of a knitting slump, many people have recommended the Felix pullover. And I decided to listen to you and finally cast it on. So that's what I did. So it's a little crazy, but here, is my Felix so far. I am making a scrappy, stripy one out of all mostly, out of mostly Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. And it's just all single skeins and scraps that I had in my stash of shelter. And this is living in my Woodsy and Wild moon bag, which is enormous and is my favorite thing ever. So the Felix pullover is a top-down raglan, and the interesting thing about this raglan is that it's got a lace detail on the raglan shaping. So it's top-down raglan, it's pullover, and it calls for worsted, worsted or air and weight yarn, I can't remember which. I'm using Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, which is a worsted. And the beautiful thing about this sweater that I think is what kind of solidifies it as like a favorite is that it's a very loose gauge. So it's knit, uh, you get the gauge according to the pattern, whatever, on a size 10 needle and it's worsted weight yarn. I didn't swatch, I just did it and it's fine and I don't care. <laughs> but I'm using a size 10 needle, it's glorious. Using a big fat needle for this yarn, it's just wonderful. So the gauge is open and airy, it goes by really fast. It's lovely. I've been having so much fun knitting this sweater and I'm so happy I finally cast it on. Now. I don't know if I'm gonna love wearing it, but I'm having a lot of fun knitting it. Uh, like I said, I'm using scraps. So most of this is Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. This is the postcard colorway, I know that for sure. I don't know what colorway that is. Is it, uh, I don't know. It's a really popular one though, whatever that colorway is. Loft, straw, I have no idea. I'm just making these things up. This is some hair spill designs, worsted. More Brooklyn Tweed, I don't know. Is it like jam pot? 
strawberry jam. I, don't, I have no idea. Green, some kind of green. <laughs> the purple is also Harrisville Designs. Um, that's the Brooklyn Tweed Black. And then that gray is also Harrisville Designs. So it's kind of a combination of the two. I did notice while knitting this that the Harrisville Designs is a teeny, teeny bit thicker, but it's okay. Apparently one of my colorways is Bird Book. Here's the tag. I don't know which one is Bird Book, but one of them is Bird Book. But I just found all of these scraps in my stash. I didn't have a sweater's quantity of worsted weight, and I just decided to go for it. So that's what I did. Now I've tried it on, and I gotta say, I really dislike this section here. This so my stripes are all a little bit uneven. <laughs> I tried to kind of keep it the same. I was measuring as I went and I was like, okay, I can do like three and a half inches for each color. That's going to get me the length I want, blah, blah, blah. Also, I'm lengthening it. Uh, but some of the colors, I didn't have quite enough to do that. So they're a little thinner. And then some sections are a little wider because I lost track and whatever. That's mostly fine except this blue and pink section, the, the line that, the line where they meet is right on like the widest point of my bust, if you know what that means. <laughs> and it's just the way it falls, like the way these two skinnier stripes fall and then the stripes down here are wider. It just looks funky on my body and I'm not into it. So I'm considering after I'm done with the sleeves and making the whole thing and blocking it and trying it on, I might rip the whole body out and just take out this pink stripe or something. I'm not exactly sure. I actually think it's the skinny blue stripe that's messing me up, but that is part of the raglan and I'm not gonna rip that back. So I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do. We'll see. Uh, I've decided that I don't really care if I don't like wearing the sweater and if I never wear it, it's just fun to knit. It's, I guess this is a process thing for me. But um, anyway, I'm doing the sleeves kind of two at a time. I've got each sleeve on its own needle and I'm kind of just doing the stripes one after the other to kind of keep it consistent or something, I don't know. The pattern does call for sleeve shaping, which I'm not doing because I decided I want my sleeves to be a little more this style. So I'm just keeping the sleeves straight all the way down. And when I get to the end, I'm gonna do some rapid decreases before the ribbing because I think I like that style. I'm th I think I'm really liking that style more than the tapered sleeve style. So we're gonna do that. Also, something that I regret about the body is that I decided too late to do waist shaping uh, because I lengthened it. There's no way shaping in the pattern, but the pattern is kind of cropped. I wanted to do it long. The length is perfect, <laughs> but uh, I decided just like way down here that I needed some way shaping. So I just kind of stuck some in and it's like not quite right. So that's another reason why I might rip out the body and redo it. And I don't think it's going to be a big deal to redo the body because it went by so fast and it was just fun to knit this yarn at this gauge. So I don't think that's going to be a big deal. But other than the whole possibly ripping out the body and re-knitting a thing, I am almost done with this sweater. So that feels kind of good. It's been going by really fast. Uh, I just have the sleeves left to go. And I'm like probably almost halfway done with full sleeves. So that's nice. For this project, I'm using my Licka interchangeable needles. I have a short set and a long set, like the tips. One set is short and one set is long. So I have two of each size. So for one sleeve, I'm using the short 10 and one sleeve, I'm using the long 10. And that is it. That's Felix by Amy Christopher's. It's lovely. It's just lovely. And that is everything I've been working on. Mm -hmm. That's it for that. So a little teeny bit of Moonstone Dye Work stuff. Uh, I'm done with the trunk show that I've been working on for the past month, month and a half or so. And it was so much fun. It was a couple Saturdays ago and it was for local yarn shop day at my local yarn shop. It was amazing. It was so much fun. I had a great time. But now that it's over, I have more room in my life to dye yarn for my online shop. So I'm doing that currently and I'm going to be having my next shop update in June. Uh, I don't have a specific day yet, but I will keep you updated on Instagram and probably in my next video here. 
So I'm going to be having a bunch of yarn like I normally do. All of my new colorways that I've created over the past couple months are going to be going up into the shop. I'm going to have lots of yak sock and really excitingly I'm going to have some bats for sale. So I kind of debuted my bats at the trunk show. I made a few and brought them with me there and I'm so happy with how they've been coming out. So I'm going to make up a bunch of bats for this next shop update too. And I'm sticking for now with mostly a Rambouillet setup. So I have a really great source for Rambouillet that I really love. It's Lana Lana. I'll leave a link to them below. And I love their fiber. So I've been getting a lot of fiber from them. I'm going to continue that for a little while. So this next, so this first round of bats that I'm going to be putting out in my online shop is going to be pretty much mostly like, I don't even know what happened to them. I threw them somewhere. But like the bat I made for these socks, it's going to be mostly Rambouillet. I have dark, medium, and light fiber. It's going to be mixed with other fibers of different colors. So they're not all going to be the same color palette, but it's going to be all mostly undyed Rambouillet with a little bit of color mixed in. So I'm really excited about that. If you're interested in my bats, stay tuned for that next June update and you'll be able to get some. I really want some. Okay. So that's it for that. That's it for the episode. Uh, thank you for joining me. I know I've been a little sparse here on YouTube and everywhere else on the internet. I don't know. That's just how things are happening right now. <laughs> but I really appreciate you being with me here in today's episode and talking about knitting with me. I would love to know what you're working on as always. And if you would like to check me out on Instagram or Patreon, the links are down below. Thank you so much to my patrons over on Patreon for your support. It is endlessly and deeply appreciated. Thank you so much. If you're interested in checking it out, please do so. There are tiers in my Patreon where you can get yarn in the mail. Yarn that I dye. Moonstone Dye Works yarn. If you like this video, please do feel free to like and subscribe. That would be wonderful. And I hope you're doing well. I hope your spring is going wonderfully. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>